Have a look at these pictures. This is me, windsurfing here on the open ocean in Cape Town. The wind is howling with 30 knots and big waves are lining up on the horizon. In this moment, you basically have two choices. You can get crushed by the wave, grasp for air, and wonder the next 30 minutes, will I make it back to the beach? Or you can face that raw power, believe in yourself, ride the wave, and experience something extraordinary. The wave is here, and it's called artificial intelligence. And right now, most of us, I have the feeling, are choosing to panic instead of embracing it. My name is Roman Peske, and I'm a passionate windsurfer. So when the wind is blowing and the waves are lining up, you can find me on the ocean. Professionally, I'm a co-founder and CEO specialized in the digital transformation. Now, let me be straight with you. I have my challenges with AI. It is so artificial. It is kind of cold and soulless. It is hard for me as a human to understand. But the thing is, the AI wave is rolling, whether we like it or not. According to ARK Investment, AI will have the biggest impact on our economy we have ever seen. It's like steam engine, electricity, and the internet combined. Interestingly, though, MIT released a study showing that 95% of enterprise AI solutions are failing. Companies are throwing millions of dollars at AI project with zero return on investment. I believe technology is not the problem. Large language models are remarkable. Neural networks are incredibly efficient. And with generative AI, technology has become accessible to basically every one of us. I believe the problem is us. I believe we are not ready to ride this wave. And I would go even further and say that AI diminishes our brain's capability to think. Let me explain you why. MIT released a study showing where they scanned brains of people using ChatGPT. And actually, the results were pretty shocking. Their brain activity systematically decreased with the amount of external support used. So meaning that people who only use their brains showed the strongest and widest ranging networks. People using search engines as external support showed intermediate response. And the weakest overall engagement was found in people using large language models such as GPT 4.0. And it comes even worse. Their brains stayed quiet after they stopped working with the AI tool. 83% of ChatGPT users couldn't quote from essays they wrote minutes earlier. Not because they were distracted, because they were disconnected. Simon Sinek recently said something profound. AI will provide boats for everyone, except if there's a storm and you don't know how to swim. So using my windsurfing example, if you're out on the ocean and the wave takes your gear, which happens, it is on you to swim back to the beach. So what would you do if I take your equipment ChatGPT away from you? How would you react? That's why I believe we need to learn to use AI the right way, a way that amplifies our humanity. Otherwise, AI will literally support us in rewiring our brains, become more lazy, less capable, and eventually make us dumb. <clears throat> Let me tell you about the day I almost could windsurfing. I was up at the West Coast, a secret spot, and when I arrived with the car, I stepped out. I immediately knew these would be the biggest waves I have ever surfed. But these perfect sets you can't resist as a surfer ultimately made me try. My wife, she wasn't happy about that. <laughs> the first wave, it was a nightmare. I got crushed. I got completely destroyed. My gear was taken by the waves, and I swam 45 minutes until I eventually made it back to the beach. I tell you, I was scared. I was questioning my passion for the sport more than ever before. 
after collecting my equipment, probably 900 meters down the beach, something clicked in my head. The wave wasn't the problem. I was. I was not ready to surf this wave. I did not do my system check. I was approaching these massive waves like I used to surf normal waves. So mentally, I wasn't prepared to succeed. So what I understood is that the wave was energy, which I could surf if I understand how to work with, but not against it. And see, this is, I believe, where we are with AI right now. Research tells us people who succeed with AI don't just use it. If students started writing on their own, their brain stayed more active than when they jumped straight into AI. And even worse, it weakened when they jumped straight into AI. We are failing with AI because we are trying to replace human intelligence instead of amplifying it. Working across different cultures, corporations, and countries, I have learned that we humans have superpowers. Superpowers that give us unique skills compared to AI. The first human superpower which I want to share with you is contextual intelligence. Intelligence is fundamentally about gathering and using information to adapt and survive. But here comes what, us, what makes us human exceptional. We don't just process information. We experience context in a way AI does not. AI processes data extremely well, but it struggles with these emotional, social, and cultural contexts which shape every human decision. We humans feel the slightest nuances. Our human consciousness allows us to experience meaning and not just data. Think about your most favorite food. Let's say pizza. With the first bite, you don't think about its chemical structure, no. You feel the warmth of the slice on your hand, let that sweet tomato sauce taste in your mouth, and let that aroma carry you back maybe to that little restaurant somewhere on the Italian coast. And this empirical, multi-sensory learning creates such deep contextual understanding, AI does not replicate. The next human superpower is adaptive resilience. When I'm out on the ocean and the conditions change, and trust me, they always do, I can't reprogram my equipment on the spot. I have to adapt in real time using past experiences and intuition. Humans excel in pattern recognition with incomplete information. We learn, we pivot, and we find solutions that don't exist in any training data set. And the third human superpower is creative problem solving. The MIT study revealed that students who started writing on their own showed the strongest connectivity in alpha, theta, and delta brainwaves. These ones are linked to creativity and memory processing. Meanwhile, ChatGPT users showed weaker engagement in the same neural networks. We need to keep people's ability to recognize problems AI doesn't even realize exist. Our Creative problem-solving superpower is the ability to identify what needs solving in the first place. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Instead of using AI to amplify and accelerate these superpowers, we encourage our brains to become more lazy and less capable, and that's not good. That's not progress. That's regression. The AI wave is building globally, having the biggest impact on our lives and economy we have ever seen. And I'm convinced that individuals, organizations, and even countries who surf straight into it will shape and dominate our next decades. But we must surf it with our human superpowers. If we don't want to lose our brains, we must first think and struggle with the challenges ourselves. 
and then start collaborating with AI. Today I challenge every one of you. What human skill will you develop that AI does not replicate? How will you contribute to a future where AI amplifies humanity rather than replacing it? The wave is here. Yes, the wind is howling and the waves are big. The conditions, no, they are not easy. But we've all mastered storms before. AI could make us dumb if we let it. But it will make us superhuman if we use it right. Thank you.